Welcome back. It is Friday, July 28th in the MLB. Our two favorite picks are on the way. We also got two leans and two dinger plays that we like as well. It's awesome. Joined by Logan. And I don't want to recap yesterday, Logan, but let's talk about it. An 0-2 day. Now I'll talk about my play first. The Nemo hit in the over seven and a half. Yeah, it never really stood a chance there. A terrible read by me. Now, Logan, we can talk about your play, Cardinals money line. Now, if you were just to look at the box score, you'd be like, Logan, what an awful read. However, you lost your starting pitcher and starting catcher in the first inning. Michaelis got ejected after Contreras got hit in the head. Just it basically summarized how we've been betting baseball the last two months. You do all this analysis on a starting pitcher, and he gets tossed in the first inning. I mean, you can comment on it right now if you want to. Yeah, you do all the analysis for Miles Michaelis, who I think is a decent starting pitcher. And then you get hit with Dakota Hudson, who's an absolute AAA bum that the Cardinals just sacrificed in that game. And I, that's that's what's tough, is I know a lot of the people in the comments don't even really watch baseball. They don't follow baseball. If they're going to bet it, they're probably not going to follow it. And then they're going to look at the box score and look at it at, ten, you know, Cubs putting up 10 runs. They don't understand really how bad Dakota Hudson is. And I really wish there was a line for that Cardinals game today because I think the Cardinals will definitely be motivated, but I I will not be picking them. It's just an unfortunate uh, kind of summation of how the last two months have, have been for these picks. It was brutal, but either way, we're bouncing back today. We're, I got the lucky uh, sweatshirt on, the Jet sweatshirt. We haven't had a losing day with it on. I think I've worn it twice, so hopefully it brings the good vibes. And I got two final notes. Number one, the parlay of the day is back. It is a Friday. We do one. It is Friday, so we do one every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Top link in the description. Three guys get a hit, plus 168 on Bet365. Pretty good value. Go check it out. We'll also give away all the winnings if it does hit, at which will be about 168 bucks. And number two, we like to talk about the top of the show. Dingers are back, and if either one of our guys hits a homer today, we'll give away 100 bucks to someone that's subscribed to the channel and comments down below. It's that simple. We just want to give back to you guys since we have been brutal over the last two months, but I think we're having a good day. Both of our plays are plus money today, and Logan, I'll let you kick it off before we talk about the Dinger plays at the end of the video. Where are you going for your play today? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to a late night game in this one, and it's a t I found a total that I do like. I'm going to the Mariners versus Diamondbacks game, and I'm taking the over nine runs in this one. Plus 100 odds on Caesars is currently your best value. Anytime I can, you know, hunt for plus value on a total, I'm going to try to do it. I see some late night fireworks between these two teams. I'm, I'm really convinced that this game will be high scoring. Hopefully that's at least how it's going in my head. Let's see how it, how it plays out in real life. Tommy Henry starts for the Diamondbacks. 4.01 ERA and a 1.37 whip on the year. Tommy Henry, if that name sounds familiar, it's because in his last start, I faded him and we actually had success. It was one of the very few picks that I hit recently. Uh, I took his earned runs over in Cincinnati and it, and it worked out for us. In that game, Henry had four walks in that game. The damage could have been a lot more than just three earned runs. If you, if you watch that game or follow that game, like I was, of course, I was just, you know, kind of like, really upset because I was like, there's so many run opportunities here, Reds. You need to capitalize. And they finally did. But there was definitely base runners, and Tommy Henry was on the ropes in that game. To one of the things I, you know, that that lends itself to the over is Tommy Henry is so low in K percentage. He's only the 10th percentile in K percentage. He's really bad at getting the swing and miss consistent strikeouts. And this is a Mariners team that if they're going to have a weakness, it's going to be the swing and the miss. Because, oh man, like every time I bet back the Seattle Mariners, they're just swinging wildly. They're swinging at anything and everything. And it, make, and it upsets me, but today against Tommy Henry, he doesn't miss a ton of bats, so I do like that. And this, he's he's facing a Mariners team that is kind of hot right now offensively. Look at watch out, world! Mariners finally stringing it together. Seattle sitting 286 against lefties in their last three games, 266 you know against all pitchers in their last three games. So this is a, this is a hot offense, and I like what the, what we saw against them or against Minnesota in their last series. They won eight to seven. They won nine to seven. They got in those shootout type games. And they were able to keep up, which is something that this this Mariners offense just haven't been consistent most of the year. But once Tommy Henry does come out, the Mariners will have an, another great matchup to me against this Diamondbacks bullpen, who ranks 30th in bullpen ERA over the last seven days with a bullpen ERA of 9.15. Look, if they don't get any sort of length out of Tommy Henry, watch out bullpen because there, there, there comes a lot of run opportunities, hopefully, for the Mariners late in this game. And they get a nine innings of, of guaranteed at-bats against that bullpen. So that's what we do like to see. Now, we look at the other side. We, look, we got Logan Gilbert starting for the Mariners. 3.88 ERA and a 1.04 whip on the year for Logan Gilbert. Decent numbers. But he, if you look at his last few starts, Logan Gilbert's given up his fair share of hits, and the strikeout numbers just haven't really been there or, you know, of, of the type of caliber that we've seen from Logan Gilbert. Let's look at his last two starts. He went five innings, pitched eight hits, five earned runs. 
that's that's not a really great outing giving up eight hits and then he also and only had five strikeouts in that one and then against uh in and in the other one five innings pitched seven hits two earned runs five strikeouts versus the twins he, he gave up seven hits i mean that's the thing it's like the damage could have been a lot more than just two earned runs and i think he's he's just not missing bats like he is i mean five strikeouts for for a guy that you know is is up there in the strikeout numbers Ugh, it's just it's a little bit concerning and i know what we do know about logan gilbert is he does give up the hard contact the diamondbacks are coming off a series that that was generally pretty good for them offensively they scored seven and six or, or six runs in their last two in two out of their last three games in that in that series against st louis so they're they're coming off a, a series where they they scored as well and I, I think they're swinging, you know, hot bats at this time. Look at it on the on the year, Arizona seventh best in runs, ninth in hits, third in strikeouts. So again, this is a pretty plate disciplined team that definitely knows how to get the timely hitting. Arizona hitting 262 at home versus righties this season. So you know, above average in there, and you like to see that. Over the last seven days, their their matchup versus Seattle bullpen. Seattle thirteenth in bullpen ERA. Even though they're middle of the pack, I still see some run opportunities late late for the Snakes in this one. Hopefully, this the the Diamondbacks and the Mariners both bring the bats today. I think this one it, it soars over its total, and that's why I'm going to go ahead and take the over in this one. But Austin, what you got for us today? I got the return of the hit parlays. We actually did really well on these before. I think we hit eight straight in a row. Then we lost a couple, kind of put them on the back burner. We do a hit parlay every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, which is kind of why I put them on the burner because we do one, you know, three times a week. But this one, since I can't hit anything, Logan gets a lot of slack in the comments. When he misses the pick, you guys seem to give me, throw me a bone every time. But like, I've been bad, just as bad, if not worse than Logan. But I am feel confident in these hit parlays, just relying on two guys to get a hit, which they've done pretty well this season. Going to Mickey Moniak of the Angels and Freddie Freeman of the Dodgers to re each record a hit plus 126 on bet 365. Now I say this and I say this because I want you guys to take advantage of it. If you do not have a bet 365 account and you're available in New Jersey, Ohio, Virginia, Colorado, and Iowa, I definitely recommend signing up for it. And if you want to use our sign up bonus, you certainly can. You just bet $1 and you get $200 worth of bonus bets. But even if you don't, I don't need you to sign up. It just with our link but if you are in one of those states i definitely think it's worth it because this parlay is minus 102 on FanDuel, and if you're on DraftKings, you technically can't do this exactly because they got freeman for one and a half hits but if you can want to do a same game parlay i like the dodgers plus three and a half or just something or five and a half something super safe in that game to parlay with a guy like freddie freeman but like i said bet 365 has the best value for the hit parlay so Take advantage of it if you want to. Details down below if you want to sign up using our link. Either way, it definitely will make you guys some money. But let's talk about Mickey Moniak first, who is on a 17-game hit streak. If I'm going to nuke a guy, it's probably going to be Mickey. But, look, he's been really good over this time. He's been hitting 380 during these last 17 games, and he's hot. And I'd rather go to a guy that's been swinging the bat pretty well. He's batting 366 on the season versus right-handed pitchers. Much better than he is against lefties, but he's going to face a righty in Kevin Gossman tonight. Now, my favorite thing about Mickey Moniak, he doesn't take a lot of walks. Now, he's going to strike out probably once, maybe twice, maybe three times a night. But he has a high strikeout percentage, like 30%, which honestly isn't, you know, too too ridiculous. But only three walks in 71 at-bats during the 17-game hit streak. And only a 3.1 walk percentage on the season. Now, if you look at on the season, what is the MLB average? Right around 8%. So he's way below average on walks. And that's fine with me. I don't pay Mickey Moniak to go up there and take walks. We want him to go out there and get a hit. And I certainly think he can. Being behind Shohei, sometimes they kind of pitch around Shohei, put him on base so I find we'll deal with someone else and that's right where Moniak's been feasting and obviously on the road against Gosman or against that Blue Jays bullpen once Gosman comes out I think he'll have his chances Gosman obviously is a tough pitcher I'm not going to poke many holes into his game but is allowing a 244 batting average to lefties which Moniak is a lefty I like his chances if you look at the pitches Gosman throws a lot of four seam fastballs 53 percent of the time and 32 percent is going to be his fastball splitter of maniac you look at him at 291 versus the four seamer the pitch he's seen the most he has a 556 batting average versus the splitter it doesn't have a ton of plate appearances versus it so take that with a you know grain of salt but still i think he can easily get it done now that will be an earlier start freddie freeman's gonna be the late night guy that we're gonna need to come through and look at freddie freeman i mean he's been as good as it gets 328 on the year is his batting average facing brandon williamson a lefty he is one for three lifetime against williamson and then Freddie has hit in 21 of his last 25. Like I said, he's been really consistent for the Dodgers. He is a high walk guy, but his walk percentage is much lower versus lefties, which we want to see. And Williamson obviously is a lefty. Then the day I'm trusting Freddie Freeman here. If you look at the pitches he's going to see, it's going to see 34% forcing. 
32% cutter and about a 13% slider. Those are about the majority of the pitches we'll see. Freeman hitting 375 versus the four seamer, 286 versus the cutter, and 277 versus the slider. So we know Freeman, really not a lot of holes in his game. He's a guy that can put the ball in play over left field, right field. He has actually much better power splits versus lefty. So if you want to sprinkle on him to go hit a home run, Go for it, but I trust Freddie Freeman to get it done in the late night game. I certainly think he's capable. He's obviously done it all year long, been hitting really well at home. Trusting Freddie Freeman to take us home. Mickey Moniak, we're relying on you. Getting plus 126. Like I said, great value on Bet365. If you can take it there, if you're in New Jersey, Ohio, Virginia, Colorado, or Iowa, take advantage of the sign-up bonus and take advantage of the great odds they give you on all these hit parlays because you can take all the guys for one-plus hits or two-plus hits. You can ladder things up there. I think it's a really great book if you, it's in your state. So take advantage of that. But, Logan, we got a couple uh, – uh, let's let's hop into Dinger Tuesday or Dinger Friday plays, and I'm gonna start with my guy, and then we'll talk about a couple leans that we did consider. If you know we weren't ice cold, we would do three or four picks, but we obviously are. So let's talk about our Dinger Dinger Friday plays. And I'm going to do a game that I already talked about briefly. I'm going to Vladimir Guerrero Jr., who's currently plus 370 on DraftKings at a home run. Now, yes, he hasn't had a ton of home runs at home this year, only five, but two of those have come since the All Star All Star break and kind of fingering things out. Now he is going up against a Grade A turkey tosser and a first start for the angels that would be lucas giolito if there's anyone i know that's going to throw some pitches right down the middle of the plate yeah it's going to be lucas giolito i think someone's going to hit a home run on the blue jays hopefully it's vladdy could be maybe bo bichette maybe springer or maybe someone else in the lineup but i think vladdy's got a chance to get it done plus for 370 on DraftKings. no he has, doesn't have a ton of them but he's been pretty hot since the all-star break hitting homers hopefully he gets another one at home tonight but logan who are you going I'm going with a with a guy that's treated us right on, on these home run plays. I'm taking Austin Riley, and I'm not going to over hopefully overthink this one. Plus 420 odds on FanDuel is currently your best value for a guy like that. Look, you, you can't go wrong picking any really of the Braves hitters at home. They're just absolutely crushing all sorts of you know metrics for hitting home runs, especially at home. I think they're cheating. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, Austin Riley is definitely one of those those hitters that that should have a, a chance at, at getting a home run today. He's he's got that home home run swing in the last couple weeks so he's at plus 420 I'll, I'll take it any day but with that we'll talk about two leans one each logan well who are you leaning for today in terms of another game if you had to pick another one if it, look as you mentioned we're cold so like i'm not gonna force another bet I, i'll stick with my total but if i were to we'll try to do another line read pick which you know what that's how i've had success in my career doing and i, I don't care what people say but I, have, I would look at the royals plus one and a half it's a super contrarian super public fade in that one but brady singer is actually a really good pitcher at home and sonny gray just i i i, I will fade that guy Left and right, I, I just think he's he's not that great of a pitcher. He's, he gets the swing and miss. He has those those games. But then he also has his games where he just cannot miss bats and the wheels fall off. I think the odds in that one being near even odds in the run line. The Royals had a million opportunities to score runners for us than the last time I picked the, the over in that one. Luckily, it did hit. But I'm just saying they, that that's a team that if they do actually convert those runners in scoring position, they will be a pain in anybody that backs the twin side today. So I'm just going to I'm going to not play that one. But it was one that I looked at. What, what were you looking at, Austin? Um, yeah, I think going back to the scene of the crime, I would lean towards the over eight and a half in the Nationals and Mets game. I mean, it's kind of been the the trend of our picks this season. We are one day early, it feels like, especially on totals, definitely, but sometimes game picks too. The line band eight and a half makes absolutely no sense. The teams couldn't do anything last night for me. A big three runs combined, had a rain delay in there. And that was against Sanga and Gray. Now you're getting Scherzer and Gore, who project to be you know better than those two guys. I don't think so. Scherzer's been giving up a lot of home runs this year. I think maybe a Nationals hits a national hits a home run. They don't have great splits against Scherzer, but look, I, I, there's going to be Nimmo is probably hitting a leadoff home run. You can take that to the bank if you want to bet on them to hit a leadoff one. That's probably happening. And I just think there's going to be a higher scoring game in that one. But obviously, I've been wrong plenty, so I take it with a grain of salt. But those are our two favorite plays today: Moniak and Freeman get a hit. That's a parlay, and we're riding with Logan's pick the over in the Diamondbacks Mariners game. Let's have a two and zero day. Let's cash a couple dinger plays. Let's give away some money if either a Vladdy or Austin Riley hits a homer. Give away hundred bucks to some like comments on the on the on this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want to check out our parlay today with three more hitters that we consider for the hit parlay, it's right below my face. Go check it out. We've been we hit on Wednesday. Let's see if we can hit another one in a row. We'll see you guys back on Saturday, hopefully with the two and zero day. We'll see you guys back again tomorrow. Peace.